Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we have a pretty simple video. We're going to be talking about Morse Circle and how to understand using this figure to find principal stresses in the max and plane shear stress. Uh, and we're going to use it by doing this example. So at a point in a structural member subject to plane stress, there are stresses on horizontal and vertical planes throughout the point. As we've done before, we're given a stress element and it's asking us to use Morse Circle to determine the principal stresses and the max shear stress at the point. And it wants us to show how these stresses are acting on the plane which they act. So what is Morse circle in the first place? Morse circle is pretty much just a graphic uh, method to determine stresses of an element derived from our previously understood transformation equations. So this method allows us to kind of skip over the complex uh, nature of the formulas and see it more intuitively through uh, an image with all of the different lines and angles relating to each other. So how do we start? Well, first we need to plot uh, a Cartesian grid system, and we're going to be swapping our x and y values with normal stress and shear stress, respectively. And our first step to any more circle problem is going to be plotting these points v and h. So what v represents is the stresses acting on the vertical face of our element. So in this case, it would be the 12 and 25 here. And the h will be representing the stresses on the horizontal plane. And we'll talk about the sign convention when we actually hop into the problem. But once we have those points plotted down, we're going to draw a line between H and V, cutting right through that axis for the normal stress. And this will allow us to then draw the diameter of our Morse circle uh, based on these two points. We can then proceed by finding where the center of that circle is going to be by taking the average of the highest and the lowest uh, normal stress that we plotted. So that distance from the shear stress axis to that center of the circle is going to be equivalent to sigma average, which is going to be the x normal force plus the y normal force divided by 2. So we plot that right there. And the circle is going to have a radius, which can be calculated using the formula here. But there will be a simpler way to do it when we actually hop into the problem. Uh, we're actually going to be using Pythagoras' theorem to take the height and the distance away from this point uh, just to find what that length is going to be. Now, each uh, plot on the circle is actually going to represent a different shear and normal stress uh, given a certain orientation based on theta p or theta. Theta p will actually represent where that principal plane is going to act. And we need to remember what a principal plane is from our previous video. If you haven't seen that, you can click up top. But the gist of it is that a principal plane is a plane where there is no shear force acting or shear stress acting. So theta p is going to represent the orientation of this stress block in order to achieve that. The unique thing about the Mohr circle, though, as we previously derived in those formulas, uh, we're looking at two theta uh, rather than uh, theta in the stress block. So anytime we're dealing with the Mohr circle, we're going to have an angle that is multiplied by 2. Another cool thing about the Mohr circle is we can determine what our max in-plane shear stress is going to be by taking the 90 degree from that principal angle that we discovered previously, or we can pretty much just equate it to a relationship that we solved earlier. We know that the radius of the circle is going to take us to that max uh, apex of the circle if we take it from the center, which is at a distance of sigma average. So there's a lot of cool relations that we can use to actually solve this problem. It's going to make it really easy for us to determine all of these different points that we need to get. Another thing to bring up before we actually hop into the problem is we can determine the principal stresses 1 and principal stresses 2 simply by using that relationship of sigma average plus the radius to get this sigma p1. Or we can take the radius and subtract that average for sigma p2. The last thing we need to bring up before we hop into this problem is that this is going to be dealing with uh, the 2D element uh, for reference. So what does that mean? Pretty much we have the analogy that we can solve shear in plane stress. But as we remember in the previous video, if we took a different orientation of this triangular element, we can actually find the absolute maximum shear stress uh, based on a given orientation of this triangular element. But in this problem, we're not going to be looking at uh, the orientation of this element. We're going to be considering that sigma p3 is going to be equal to 0, meaning that this element is not going to be reoriented, and we only need to deal 
with this figure here. All right, so let's hop into the problem and take a look at what we're dealing with. All right, so now we have everything we need to know to hop into this problem. We're going to start by figuring out what our variables are. So we're left with a normal force x equal to 25 ksi acting tensile, so it's positive. We have normal force y, which is 7, also acting tensile. And we are left with the shear force or shear stress xy, which is 12, and it's going to be positive. Since that force is acting positively in the same direction as x would, we have positive 12 ksi. Now we determine our horizontal and vertical points. So for vertical, we are going to have 25, which is the x normal force, and we have a negative shear xy, so negative 12. And then horizontal is going to be the y, which is 7, and we have the positive version, so it's 12. Now we can plot these points. If we consider this uh, as 10 ksi intervals, we're going to have a point that's somewhere around here for 25, and then at negative 12, we're going to be looking down here, and that's going to be our v. And we can do the same for our h. We're going to have a 7, which is going to be somewhere over here, and 12 going upwards on our shear axis, so somewhere around right there. That's going to be our h. Now let's throw our circle on to this diagram here and see what it's going to look like. All right, now that our circle is plotted with all of the same variables that we needed to solve for on that previous figure that I had up, we can finally start solving. The first thing we should do is look for the sigma average because we know what that's going to equal to. It's that formula over here. We're going to have a sigma average, which is equal to the normal course of x, which is 25. Add the y, which is 7, and divide that by 2. And normal force average is going to be 16. What does this mean? This is where the center of our circle is going to lie with respect to the normal axis. Now we need to determine the radius of the circle. Now we remember we have the radius equal to this formula, or we can consider a different method, which is taking the Pythagoras theorem for this section. We have triangular elements that we can actually solve for. This length is going to be the x component for normal force here, subtracting that average. Since that's the center of the circle, it's going to leave you with that remainder length. Then you have the height, which is simply going to be that shear. So what we can do is solve for that base of the triangle, which is going to be sigma x minus sigma average. That will equal 25 minus 16 which is equal to 9, and we know that the height of the triangle is going to be shear xy, which is equal to 12. And then solving for this, we would be left with r equals to the square root of 12 squared plus 9 squared, which is equal to 15 ksi. Now we can proceed with finding the angle that this triangle is creating between the normal stress axis and the radius to that point V. Why is this angle important? It's because it's taking us to that principal stress. So it would actually be allowing us to solve for theta P, which is the principal angle to that principal plane. So we know how to do this. We have the base of this, we have the height of this, we have the hypotenuse, you can do whatever you want to find this angle, but we can do tan theta P, which is gonna to equal to or 2 theta p, sorry, which is equal to the tan inverse of the height or the opposite over the adjacent, which is 12 over 9. And that will leave you with 53.13 degrees. But this is for 2 theta p. If we wanted it on the element, we are going to need to consider theta p. So we have to take that angle, divide it by 2, and that will give you the principal angle of 26.57 degrees, which will be placed right here. I'll just write it down so you guys know what I'm talking about. 26.57 degrees. Now what's next? Let's solve for what these uh, principal normal forces are or normal stresses are. We have a formula down here, but it's pretty intuitive. We're just gonna be taking sigma P1, which is equal to D sigma average, we have already calculated this. We have 16. We're going to be adding to get to that P1. 
So we need to add this distance. What is the distance? The radius, which we already have. So that's going to be equal to 31. Sigma P2 is a very similar thing, except instead of adding the 15, we're going to be subtracting it, and we're left with 1. So there are your principal angles. And another unique thing about the in-plane shear stress that we already discovered before, but we just didn't mention, it's going to land exactly where that sigma average is. So what does that mean? That means the normal force acting on that plane that we're analyzing in the triangular element is going to equal to sigma average. So we can write that sigma n will equal to sigma average, which is equal to 16 KSI. Now we can take all of this information and go ahead and plot it on an element. And I'll do that uh, in the next part of this video. So now that we've drawn this triangular element, we know that we're going to be analyzing at 45 degrees here because of the rules for the max in-plane shear. And we are inclining this element here by 26.57 degrees, as we saw for before, to determine the sigma P1 and sigma P2. And this is equal to 1 KSI. This is equal to 31 KSI. This is the normal force on the plane or the average. So I'll write sigma average, which is equal to sigma n, which is equal to 16 KSI. And this is shear P acting this way. And this is going to equal the radius, which we solve for, which is 15 KSI.